this, this project is an open access X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy simulator, as I'm sure you read at the top. That's a lot of words, but spectroscopy is a very convenient and non-invasive way to analyze samples of materials for texture and composition and lots of other things. However, it's very difficult and requires a lot of expensive equipment. So this project is an attempt to create tools to help teach people to use this uh, resource and this technology without otherwise damaging it or misinterpreting its confusing data. Um, so this simulator will hopefully be used in conjunction with a teaching program that will help students learn about the photoelectric effect, which is how spectroscopy works. As you, what it is basically is you're shooting x-rays at uh, a sample and those x-rays will knock loose photons or will knock electrons off of the sample and those electrons will have certain energies that you can measure. Um, this is through the photoelectric effect, which is an important uh, staple in physics and is something that we hope to teach. Uh, what the simulator will do is it will create realistic but uh, more perfect spectra that our students can look at and try and interpret. Uh, right now, the way it works is uh, each material, like elements and compounds are stored in a database and then read to create a spectrum of just that material. And then those will be superimposed on top of each other and they will be modulated based on different factors like the uh, percentage composition, if you have like a mixture of materials, or if you have a layered sample, it will include the layers, height and depth and thickness. Um, as you can see in this middle graph here, uh, this is a sample of a layer of copper put on top of a silicon substrate, uh, which is a common thing that you encounter in electronics. And this is what those two spectra would look like. Uh, another thing it can do is it can do angle resolution, which is the process of tilting your sample to produce a different spectrum uh, as, you, as the angle increases. If you have a top layer on your sample, then as the angle increases, the perceived thickness of that layer will increase and the signal from that particular layer's composition will get stronger. As you can see in this bottom graph, uh, there's a one nanometer layer of lithium on top of our sample. And as the angle increases from zero, which is just horizontal to 70 degrees, the thickness or the intensity of the lithium signal increases dramatically. Um, in the future, we hope to have a much larger database of a lot of common compounds, uh, as well as being able to replicate things like peak shifts from binding energies. Uh, when two atoms bond together, uh, that lower energy state uh, is much stronger and will cause the uh, any electrons that are released from that energy state will have less kinetic energy as a result because that bond will absorb more energy. So that means that the peak from that electron will shift over. Um, and we want to, just from a technical standpoint, we want to make this sort of more a self-contained program as it is right now. There's a lot of code that is just sort of run from an IDE, which is not super user friendly for people who don't know how to do that kind of thing. Uh, one of our planned things we want to do is be able to add real data analysis as well, which would be great. Um, this would be sort of limited, but uh, if we can build a comprehensive enough material database, then essentially for sort of simpler, flat samples, maybe some layers, maybe some mixing, um, it, you could create a large system of equations that would basically form a matrix that we could then sort of fit a, uh, we can fit a vector to that will be a most likely uh, composition of that sample. Uh, and so by using all these tools, 
uh, and with the tools that we hope to develop in the future, we can create a good resource for people who can use spec uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Because it is such a sensitive technology, but still so useful, it's very important that people know how to use this and do it properly because it's just, it, it's just incredibly valuable to the scientific community.